Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And uh, what I want to talk about this morning, really, is uh, God encourages His people. You think sometimes we need to be encouraged? You ever need to be encouraged? I think we all do. And sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Brother Eastwood, of course, he's in heaven now. But he used to say, come to preacher's meetings. He might not have seen you for a year or two and he'll say, I've been praying for you. I think he had a long list of people he prayed for consistently. But he said, you know, sometimes I'm down and my wife's up. Sometimes I'm up and she's down. And she says, I don't know why. He said, I don't know what will happen if we both get down at the same time. So uh, we need to encourage each other. The ones that are up ought to try to pull the others up, right? And uh, then when you're down, they, others can help pull you up. But uh, We're going to look at Joshua chapter 1, read about uh, nine verses here. And Joshua has some problems. Moses dies. And so Joshua has to step up and become the leader. And he'd been following Moses. Uh, and then Moses dies and so that puts some responsibility here on Joshua, doesn't it? There are quite a few Jewish people going through the wilderness. He had to feed them, get them water. Of course, the Lord helped out, didn't he? Then man had come down. Did he get water out of a rock? And go on and on. And Joshua had seen all that. Another thing, when they come out of Egypt, the Egyptians were right behind them. They got to the Red Sea. You think Joshua was there and saw when Moses stuck his staff out and the Red Sea parted and they walked across on dry ground? Wow. It wasn't the Red Sea and the water wasn't ankle deep. If it was, how'd all those Egyptians die? Because <laughs> the water came in and drowned a bunch of them in their chariots chasing. But you know what? They couldn't go this way and couldn't go that way and the Red Sea's in front of them and God made a way. Amen. Will God make a way? Yes. And so now we're going to look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore rise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And so did God promise Israel some land? Are they still fighting for it today? Been watching the news? Yeah. yeah. Still going on, isn't it? Did God promise it to them or not? Will God keep his promise? Amen. They will get their land. And he will set up his kingdom. Uh, Jerusalem be really the center of everything. Even in the universe. Now what verse did I get down here to? About three or four? Three. Three. Thanks for the help. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. And think about that. What if, what if God to tell you every place your foot said here in Noblesville you could have it? Boy, you'd be rich, wouldn't you? You think so? Yeah. yeah. Well, the Jews are in trouble with a lot of people. The Arabs want to get rid of them. And there's a fight over who has the land. Who's going to end up with it? Whoever God promised it to. That'd be Israel. And he says, verse four, from uh, from the wilderness, this Lebanon, even unto the uh, great river, the river of Euphrates. So. You, Really from the Mediterranean Sea over to the Euphrates River and all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee uh, all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. They make Joshua a promise here. 
I won't leave a failure and forsake you. Amen. Does the, will Jesus be with you if you're a Christian? Yes, sir. So that he never leave us nor forsake us. Sometimes the, it's kind of hard, doesn't it? You ever have any hard times in life? Did Joshua and Moses and all the Jewish people have a hard time in life? Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And so when they do cross over the Jordan River, and God parts it for them just like he parted the Red Sea for Moses, they even put some stones in the middle of the uh, Jordan River, 12 of them in a stack. You'll have to go read the book of Joshua and find all this. As a memorial. It was a memorial. Isn't it sad in America they're tearing down statues of our heroes? Yes. They stomp on the American flag and burn it up. That's sad to me. Verse 7. Uh, but then he promised them, and then they, when they get into the land, each tribe got their part. And they laid all that out. But they didn't get it for free. They had to go fight for it. They had to have a fight for it. You could say General Joshua. He was the leader, wasn't he? Of course, he had a commander above him. Who was his commander-in-chief? Who was Joshua's commander-in-chief? God was. God was. Verse 7, Only be thou strong for... A very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest now he warned Israel keep the law do what God tells you to do you think America needs a warning keep God's law do what God says to do how, how, how are we doing with that? Not good. Not good. Well, what happened to Israel? They later on went into captivity because they went off into idol worship. You think there's any idol worship going on in America today? Yeah. yeah. A lot of it's they worship the almighty dollar. Material things. They all need to worship God. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Joshua needs to keep preaching the Bible to him. Amen. Maybe some of our politicians ought to quote a few scriptures. Did Abraham Lincoln ever quote any scripture in his speeches? House divided cannot stand. Abraham Lincoln said, I wonder where he got that from. He got it right out of the Bible. And he often quoted the Bible. In a lot of his speeches. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou thou shalt make thy uh, way a prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. You think you think we'll do better if we do what God tells us to do? Maybe the people ought to quit arguing with each other and try to help each other out. Usually around Christmas it gets some better for a while. Doesn't it? Yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I, I don't know. I had a guy horn cussing me last night. I wasn't going fast enough. Uh huh. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong, have good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Is that a pretty good promise? I think if we live for God, God's going to be with us. I think He came to church with me this morning. You know, really, sometimes, like I say, 
did, several times he said, be strong, be courageous. Well, you know, nowadays if you get up and tell somebody you believe the Bible, somebody's going to say, I don't like that. Thank you. Or you try to tell them about Jesus, I don't want to hear that. If you quote verses, I've had people tell me in the past, uh, I don't like people quoting Scripture to me. Well, I don't like their cussing either. I don't like them blowing their cigarette smoke in my face. But I usually won't say I tolerate it. Do you tolerate it? No. Well, their idea of tolerance is it's my way or no way. Right. Christians, we're not out in the streets trying to physically force people. You can't force people to get saved. You can't force people to live for God if they don't do it out of their heart because they want to do it and because they love God and they appreciate what God's done for them. You can't make them do it. Now, I'll tell you something. You can have this. My dad had a lot of sayings. One that he had that I always remember, nobody can make you do anything, but they might make you wish you had. God won't make you get saved. But I'll tell you what, you live for the devil, before it's all over, you'll be wishing you had listened to God. That's right. You'll be wishing you had got saved. You'll be wishing you had gone to church yep. and read your Bible and prayed yep. and didn't act like the world. The world out there, they think we're crazy. I think they're crazy. Amen. It's getting crazy. It is. But you know, Joshua here, I he followed uh, Moses around and uh, wandered around with Moses for 40 years on the backside in, in the desert. They had to get water out of a rock. They had to get manna. Uh, remember, they complained about the manna. So then God sent them quail, and it was three foot deep, and they got sick of eating meat then. <laughs> and that, in that human nature, Dr. McGee says God's got a sense of humor. Yeah. And he says, if you don't believe that, look in the mirror. <laughs> you can do what you want with that. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying what Dr. <laughs> McGee said. I can get myself in trouble. But you know, anybody heard of a fellow named David Livingston? Yeah. yeah. Now he was went into Africa as a doctor missionary and traveled around and said every place he went, they worshiped something. And he went some places at the time where no white men had been, probably. And they were worshiping something. But he was trying to tell them about the true God. Amen. But when he was a young preacher, uh, he got an invitation to come to a huge church and speak. And so uh, he got up to speak and... Uh, his mind was a blank. Uh, I don't think he was young. I think he was a young preacher then. Mine gets blank sometimes, but I'm, I blame it on getting old. Uh, but he sat down red-faced, and afterwards there was a missionary, a well-known, famous missionary there named Moffat, and he told uh, David Livingston, he said, David, said, uh, if you can't make it as a, a preacher, maybe you can make it as a doctor. And uh, David, that stuck, that was an encouragement to him. And he, he remembered that. Well, did he become a famous missionary doctor? or doctor missionary, however you want to put it. Maybe because somebody encouraged him. No. There might have been some other people that didn't encourage him, but that helped him. Don't we all need to be encouraged at times? Because it's easy to get discouraged. Joshua had the fellow that had been his leader for years and seen him perform miracles. Really, God did the miracles, but Moses was the one God used for it. 
to part the Red Sea. Matter, if you go back and start studying the history, when they come up there to go into the promised land, the promised land is not heaven. That's right. The promised land is a Christian life. And so you're in the promised land. I don't know about you. I think living in America is the promised land to me. I think I've got it pretty good because I get to live in America. And God's been good to me and blessed me. But they sent out ten spies. Joshua and Caleb and eight others. That'd come out ten, wouldn't it? Eight and two. I've got to make sure my math's right. <laughs> I don't want to use modern math. I use the old math. Amen. But anyway, what happened when they went over there? And they're spying out everything. They're getting ready to go in militarily and take the land over like God had promised them it was theirs. And Joshua and Caleb come back. What did they tell them? Joshua and Caleb said, God said we can do it, and we can do it. Amen. The eight others said... There are giants over there in big walled cities. We can't do it. Were they discouraged? But Joshua and Caleb said, we can do it because God said we can do it. Amen. And the other spies, they said, well, we look like grasshoppers because of those giants over there. And they got big walled cities. And so they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. A whole generation died off. Is that the story or not? Is that what the Bible... You know what the Old Testament is? It's a Jewish history book. Now they're ready to go into the land again. Moses isn't the leader anymore. Joshua is. But you know, even when they go across then, when Joshua leads them into the promised land, and it is promised to them, and when they get in, they finally do divide it up and give the different tribes their little sections. Didn't they? You'll have to read your Bible. It's all in there. But these things are in there. What was the first thing they came to? What was the first battle? Great walled city. Jericho. Jericho. Amen. And they marched around it. That's the world. Do you have any battles with the world? But they marched around it and shouted, blew their trumpets, and the walls fell down. Is that in the Bible? Yeah. And so then what was the next battle? Ai. A little place called Ai. Oh, we don't even need to send all our men up. We can take that place. <laughs> and they got whooped. That's right. <laughs> they did. You had to lead it. Then they had to go and try it again. They finally won the second time. AI is I. Self. You got to battle with the world, but you got to battle with yourself. Which one's the harder battle? Yourself. I can ignore the world pretty much, but it's kind of hard when that food, big piece of pie is sitting there saying, eat me, eat me. Huh? Mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm pregnant. Uh -huh. But AI, AI and I. Then, then, then what was the next one they come to? They finally got the won the battle over self, battle over the world. What was the third one? The world, the flesh, and the, the devil. devil. The Gibeonites. The Gibeonites. Now the Gibeonites. They weren't, uh, were told, Israel was told by God, don't make treaties with the people over there in the land. Yep. But the Gibeonites tricked them. Has the devil ever tricked you? If he hasn't, he will. Still does. He works on it. And so, the Gibeonites got some old stale bread, worn out clothes. And they come to Israel and said, we came from a long ways away. We're not your neighbors here. So you could make a treaty with us. Has America fallen into that kind of mess? 
think the devil's behind stuff. And so we look at all these things. And so they finally did win these battles. So I had some points here for this sermon. I think uh, we need some words of encouragement. Be strong. And, uh, be courageous. Live for God no matter what everybody else does. Whether it's the world. You need to really overcome your flesh. You know, sometimes uh, it's hard for me to come to church. Is it ever hard for you to come to church? Mm -hmm. But you struggle in here. And then sometimes I've seen people come into church, they were really down. I could tell they were down. But a lot of times by the time I get through preaching, they're acting like they're up. That's not my great preaching. I think it's God working in them. Amen. Don't you think that's what it is? The Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And the fellowship of the other Christians that you're here with. Because there's other people that believe like you believe and think like you think. And they're headed for the same heaven you're headed for. Amen. And uh, we're going to all, you know, uh, one of these days we're going to all celebrate Christmas in heaven. Think they'll celebrate Jesus' birthday in heaven? Sure. Well, I don't know. He's eternal. Oh, you know we can get But anyway, you know, uh, every time we take communion, how often are we supposed to? As often as you do this, do this in what? Remembrance, remembrance of me. So every time we come to church, we ought to remember Jesus and what He did for us. Amen. How He came and lived and died. Did He struggle? Yes. Did the devil tempt Him? Did uh, uh, have trouble? He had trouble with his flesh. The devil made him said, "Turn those stones into bread. Jump off the pinnacle." He's trying. He said, and, and the devil said, "Here, I'll give you all this, this the whole world if you'll just fall down and worship me." And Jesus come back answering him with the word of God over and over again. But it's kind of hard to answer the devil with the Word of God if you don't know anything about the Word of God. Right. So it'd probably be a good thing to read your Bible. Maybe memorize a few verses. Wouldn't hurt you, would it? Thy word have I hid my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's Psalms 119, I believe. Might be verse 11. I'm not sure about the verse. That's, the, that's what the verse says Amen. in my Bible. And so the first thing we wanted to talk about, God encourages us because we need to be encouraged. Don't we sometimes need to be encouraged? I need it, you need it, everybody needs it. Amen. And Joshua was trying to encourage these people. Matter of fact, at one point, Joshua drew a line on the ground and said, you decide. You step over the line and follow me or go the other way. Now there were a couple of two and a half tribes that didn't want to go into the promised land. Right. Ain't on the other side of Jordan. But Joshua made him make a promise. Said, you help us go over there and fight the battle, then you can come back over here and stay on this side of the Jordan if you want to. I think it was Gad and Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh, half tribe of Manasseh. If you read your Bible, or you'll find that. Are there some Christians kind of want to keep one foot in the world, one foot in, the, in God's? Uh huh? Most of them. A lot of them. Yeah. And so they had two and a half tribes here. But the others, when they went over and fought the battle. Really, when Joshua went in, you ever heard divide and conquer? Mm -hmm. yeah. He went right in the middle and then went north and south and divided them and then conquered them but really they never did completely get completely conquered that's what Israel's having trouble with right now they let the Palestinians even have a big chunk of ground 
And yeah. Israel hadn't controlled it in, I think it's 10 years or so. Then they got attacked. They can't live in peace and let the terrorists keep staying there. Because the terrorists keep saying, we're going we're gonna to destroy Israel. That's their plan. It won't happen because God says it won't happen. But God encourages it because we don't have uh, instant success. Instant success. You know, we're, we want everything instant anymore. Matter of fact, with cause of the COVID now, we want to pull up at the grocery store and they'll bring the groceries out to you. Or you can stay at home. And you don't have to even go out to a restaurant. They'll door dash the food over there, won't they? I think it's made us lazy. We are lazy. Maybe we ought to get up and try to do something for God in the world. We ought to resist the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. But God encourages us because we don't have instant success. Now, I make instant coffee in the microwave. I used to just do it with hot water out of the tap. That's awful. But Carol didn't drink coffee. Now, they told her when she got married, she'd start liking coffee. She liked to smell it when it's brewing, but she won't drink it. And sometimes, you know, we work and we work hard, and it seems like it takes forever to reach our goals, and sometimes it seems like we're never going to reach them. And so we get into these things. Joshua, he'd followed Moses around and he'd seen all this. And, uh, you know, the world, I think a lot of people think, well, they'll, they'll figure out how to go to heaven on their own. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 and 16, 25, it repeats the, pretty much the same thing. It says, There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death you can't work your way to heaven some people trying to work their way to heaven and uh, you know after Joshua passes off the scene and you go into the book of Judges how's it how's it get I think America is about ready to go into the book of Judges if we're not already there yeah, we're it says there. every man did that which was right in there own eyes. Judges 21-25. Is that about where America's at today? Get out of my way, I'm coming through. And if you don't, they'll run right over you. Anybody had any problem with somebody trying to run over you? Well, you pull up and stop at light. Oh, God! Oh, yeah. They honk at me when I turn to my Oh, they flash their lights? Huh? That's just little stuff. Of course, a lot of them got their nose in their phone and they'll walk right out, straight out in front of you and then look at you like you did something wrong. Or they'll run a stop sign and look at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> I've got the right of way because I'm all right and you're all. Isn't that the way the world looks at it? They don't want to admit it. It's hard to find a sinner. When you break God's law, that's sin. Matter of fact, if you don't trust Jesus, I believe it's sin. My, really, there's only one reason anybody ever goes to hell. It's rejecting Christ. It's not getting drunk. It's not doing drugs. It's not murdering somebody. I can show you in the Bible where people let a lot of that stuff and they, they're making it to heaven. You know, really, I... Uh, one of the big things is our leaders. Was Joshua a leader? Was Moses a leader? Do we need some leaders in America today? Amen. Not just in it for the money. We need some heroes. Don't we? Well, they try to get rid of all the heroes. The greatest hero I know of is Jesus. Amen. He's my hero. I don't know, though, if you went around asking some of the young people today who their hero was, I don't think you'd hear Jesus very often. They'd name all kinds of people. But, really, 
it's kind of hard for us down here to do good when the people are up above us not doing right. I, I, I believe America's government right now is more corrupt than I can ever remember in my lifetime. And that includes Clinton and Nixon. And Johnson, I'll throw him in too. I don't know who's the Democrat or Republican, doesn't make me any difference. I care less. But at least Nixon did have, I'll resign. Johnson said, I won't run again. Clinton just kept going. Now I know I'm meddling. <laughs> but I got a couple other places I want to read to you. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Proverbs 21, 1 through 4 says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of the water is turned, it whither, whithersoever uh, he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. <coughs> Isn't that interesting? You think the Lord knows what our leaders' hearts are telling them? Yeah. Who do you really think is in control? God. Most powerful man in the world? God. Well, according to these verses, I'd say it's God. Verse 3. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Most of them don't want to sacrifice anything. They, you know, it's funny to me how most politicians get in there and they get rich. Very interesting. Am I making it up? They don't make that much. Not by their salary. Right. But somehow they get rich. And I'm not talking party again. Verse 4. And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Think any of the, our leaders have a pride problem? Yes. Well, who's going to win out? God. And if God wins, we win. Right. Then I want you to go to Psalms chapter 46, verses 1 through 4. And we're going to read a few verses here, four verses. And then I think I'll be done. Psalms 46, verses 1 through 4 says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Do you think America's in trouble? Yes. yes. Well, who are we going to turn? Here it says God. Do you think it would help if America would turn back to God? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's the only hope we have. Oh, it's education. It's science. It's We've got more atomic bombs than everybody else. We got nuclear submarines. So what if we don't use them? Our leaders won't even make the choice to do anything. Then one group blames the other group constantly. Instead of getting together and doing something and asking, maybe they ought to get together and have a prayer meeting. And say, God, what's the best thing to do for the people in America? Not only that, I think America has a big influence on the whole world. We're a city on the hill. People look to America. But I tell you what, we're getting to the point now they're looking other places. Right. We need to get some leaders in there and maybe you ought to pray for some of your leaders and pray that God will get a hold of some of their hearts. And then you can take it locally or and even worldwide for that matter. It says, God is our refuge and the strength of very pre present help in trouble. Therefore, will I not, for therefore, 
For I not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You really think global warming is going to kill us all? Is that our greatest enemy? You know what I think the greatest enemy is? Sin and the devil and the flesh. Huh? Sin. Maybe if we get the sin problem straightened out, people wouldn't be throwing their litter out. Maybe they would manage better. Maybe they wouldn't be in debt so bad. Now I'm going to get in trouble. I better get off that. <laughs> Though, verse 3, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams where shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles, and the most high. Is God going to come and straighten this mess out? Yes. But He's not done it yet. But He's put us here. And we need to keep looking up. And we need to not get discouraged. And we need to keep living for God. Now what we need to do? Matter of fact, it would be good to get in your Bible and claim some of the promises. Amen. Did He promise Israel anything? Does he promise the Christians anything? He promised them the land. Uh, he promised them that the descendants would be mighty and as many as the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea. And somebody says, well, I don't know how that's possible. But you got Abraham, had sons on both sides, didn't he? Arabs and Jews. Can an Arab get saved? Can a Jew get saved? Yes, sir. Can a Gentile get saved? Can anybody? Is it a whosoever will gospel? Yes, sir. Whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For God sent not his Son to the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be well, what are you going to do when a preacher gets up and says, I don't like the word saved? Leave the room. Well, you'd have to rip parts of the Bible out. Pray for them. Well, I don't know. I better leave that one. <laughs> It'll come to my mind, but I'm not going to give it to you. Let's all stand. Pray for that guy.